what's going on? This is Charlie Eugene back with another video. Today I have a HP ProDesk 600 G1. This is a small form factor, SFF. They also, well, you, you've seen my previous videos where I'm working on the ultra small form factor, the really small boxes. And then they have a bigger version, which is like the regular size desktop that you commonly see. But today I just wanna show you guys how easy it is to upgrade this. I got this thing for super cheap. I got it for $79.99 at Micro Center. It was a clearance markdown. I said, hey, why not? It originally came with an i5 fourth generation. It only came with eight gigs of RAM, 256 SSD. And I'm just gonna show you if you're on a tight budget, how you can get this thing to be kinda up to date. Of course, it's not gonna be as fast as the newest machines, but if you're on a tight budget and you want a decent machine, you can upgrade this and get it to be, you know, at a decent, um, a de ha have a decent performance. All right, so as you can see to my left here, I have an i7 fourth gen. I have three eight gig um, sticks of DDR3 RAM. So I'm gonna get this up to 24 gigs. I'm trying to find um, the last Neo Forza model online somewhere. I need one more eight gig stick. I've been having a problem finding one but I'm gonna wait, wait it out because I wanna match all my, my RAM. Also, I got a really cheap video card for like 30 bucks. This was also a clearance markdown. This is a Power Color AMD Radeon R7 240. I think it comes with like four gigs of RAM or something like that. So this definitely helps with the uh, ports in the back. I have my thermal paste for the, for the chip and a flathead screwdriver to remove the um, heat sink fan, okay? So very easy to open these models up. It's held in place with one latch. You just lift up on this latch and then you pull it towards yourself and it comes off very easy to access these machines. I love these machines for that fact that you can get into them easy and everything's right in front of you. As you can see, I've already swapped out the 256 SSD and I put in a 512. 512 is my sweet spot. I like um, not having too much hard drive uh, space because I get lazy and I just dump files and if something happens to your machine or that that hard drive dies, you're, you're shit out of luck. So what I do is I get my externals one terabyte. I keep everything one terabyte and up on externals. Anyway, if you see these green tabs, this, these green little stickers, they show you that, that it can be removed. So it's easy to um, spit and stuff. It's easy to... Um, identify where you can adjust things so with this you can pull it forward sorry for the camera shaking i'm on a my table's a little loose and this is how you can access your solid state drive it's held in place with screws take these screws out lift up on this tab and you can pull the drive out i'm not going to show you guys how to do that and here's your ram slot so this this machine can hold up to 32 gigs which i'm going to i'm going to eventually get there right now i'm at 24 but that's good enough for me right now and this is your heat sink and your processors underneath this heat sink. Very easy to access everything. That's why I like buying these models. I used to build desktops all the time. I used to do the whole, you know, clear uh, window on the side, put in a uh, color uh, LED fan, all that fancy stuff. I don't really do that anymore. I just buy machines like this and upgrade them like this because I'm not really into that anymore. But uh, let's, um, so here's your graphic uh, PCI a graphics card slots i'll be putting that in there and here's three pcie slots which i'm going to eventually probably put in the bluetooth wi-fi a combo card in there and i'm probably going to put a usb c pcie card there i'll do that in the future right now is good enough for me right now so let's get into the video i want to keep talking first thing i'm going to do is put the ram in i've already swapped up the ssd which is very easy to do I don't need to explain that, show you guys that. It's very easy to do that. So let's start with the RAM. This is desktop RAM. This is DDR3 RAM. So easiest way to uh, identify how the teeth go in, this is longer and this side shorter. And then when you look on the actual motherboard, you can see that longer side, shorter side. So just make sure your tabs are spread apart here. See, that one wasn't spread. Got to make sure they spread. And then just insert them. Just be very careful. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to he-man it. Push down on it so you hear a clip. Two clips. Bam. That's in. And just do the next one. 
Make sure those teeth match the grooves, the longer side and the shorter side. Press down on it as well until you hear it snap. Very easy to do this. If you can find one of these machines at $80, it's definitely, definitely worth uh, upgrading. All right, so I got one more eight gig stick I gotta find, but 24 is good for now. So bam, RAM's in, done. So now I'll put the graphics card in. So you see these, this green arrow? Let me move this a little bit forward here. Move this forward. You lift up on this, and here you go. You got access to your PCI E slots. Uh, you're going to have to take out one of these metal things. These things are easy to remove. So I've already removed it. And like this, you match the teeth as well. Short side, long side. Look on the motherboard. Short side, long side. Make sure you put it in place. Don't go crazy with it. There you go. You hear that snap? It's in there. And all you have to do, put this flat back. Done. Easy. Like I said, I'm going to eventually, um, I'm definitely going to use these PCIe, these three extra ones. I'm definitely going to use those for something. So now here's the not difficult part, but this part is a little bit, takes a little bit more work to do. Um, this, this wire here, be careful. Just gently remove this wire from the fan. And then my fingers are kind of big. So pull out this power connector here. Oh man, let me use my left hand. I'm left handed, guys. Pull that out. Set that to the side. And also, there's another power cable for the fan. This wire is being, it won't hang out by itself. There you go. Move this connector here. Be careful. Be gentle. I don't want to pull it by the wires, but I might have to because my fingers are kind of, there we go. Get that out the way. Now, grab you a decent sized flathead, not too small, but not too big to get in the groove of these screws. And let's see, yep, there we go. Start moving your screws. And it makes a clicking sound. I think, I think that clicking sound lets you know that, it's, that it is removed. Think that one's good enough i'll find out so yeah man this machine is only 80 dollars. so i was like yo i gotta buy this man i don't really use windows machines like i used to but i like having them around just in case i need to do something on the windows side i'm more of a mac guy i'll be honest i love mac i know you guys are probably like oh he's an apple fan boy yep pretty much but it is cool being able to put your own parts in there. I do miss doing this. Being able to just swap stuff out. I think that's enough. I don't know. We'll find out. Let me uh, let me see if I can pull on this uh, heat sink a little bit. Let me move this up. This can be moved up. Bam. Out. There you go. Access to your chip. So you got to clean this old thermal paste off, which I didn't think about. Set that to the side. This little, this little, um, this little clip here. You have to just pull this towards yourself, and then there you go. Comes up, and then bam. Always remember, there's a, there is a, there is a triangle that you have to pay attention to. That's how you're, that's how you properly seat your. A processor so just look for this arrow and the chip also has that arrow well, not arrow excuse me but triangle excuse me it also has a triangle there really small just make sure you remember that to put your new chip in and you're done so very easy this is an i5 i'm gonna get this i5 up out of here i'm not a big fan of i5 i'm an i7 guy i've never had an i9 before I don't know too much about i9s, but yeah, let me uh, put some paste on this chip. Don't put the paste on until you get the uh, CPU in there first. So you see this arrow. Let me bring this up close. If you guys can see that. See that arrow up there where my finger is moving? That's how you're going to put that chip into the motherboard. So 
it's 1150 socket 1150 i believe lga 1150 it's a socket socket size and i think i got the right socket let me see did i get the right socket i might have no huh i don't know i don't think this might not be the right socket yeah that's the right socket i'm bugging it's late and plus i'm drinking some gin so I'm a little silly right now. That's the right socket. Cool. So yeah, the socket is in place. And what I usually do is I close this off. Make sure this these teeth go into that screw. And then you put this back underneath that little latch. Bam. So the, the, the ship is in place now. Thank God it's the right socket size. I thought it was the wrong socket, but it's the right one. I'm going to clean off this. Uh, old thermal paste and uh, give me one second. I'm always doing that. I did it on my last video. Give me one second, guys. Hold on. All right, I'm back. I usually use Q tips to get the uh, old paste off. I dip it into a little bit of rubbing alcohol and then I use Q tips to get the uh, old thermal paste off. What was that? All right, so. It's a little, it's not too much on here, but yeah, I use, I use rubbing alcohol and Q-tips to get mine off. You can use other, other methods, but this is my method. I've been doing this for a long time and it works out for me. So yeah, so I get another Q-tip to dry it off, get like, get like three or four Q-tips and just kind of dry this off. It's not going to be the best looking, but hey, wipe it off. Clean. I'm not even doing this on the camera. What am I doing, guys? I'm sorry. I am, I, like I said, I drink some gin and I'm a little warm right now while I'm doing this video. So yeah, that's pretty clean, you know? You can get it cleaner than this. Go for it, but this should be good enough. Just make sure it's dry. Make sure it is dry. Make sure it's dry before you apply. How about that? All right, so that's done. So now what I do is there's a whole bunch of different methods to applying thermal paste i just do the i just do the easy way which is to dab thermal paste in the middle of the chip of the cpu i just do like a nice size dab i do like this that should be enough right there it might be a little bit too much that might be a little bit too much, but we'll find out. So yeah, that's it. You put your thermal paste in there, and then you put your your heat sink back over the chip, line it up with the screws, and that's it. Reconnect your, reconnect your cables. Let's put these screws back in place. Do it, do the star pattern on this. You always want to do the star pattern on this, on these screws. This one's not biting. Is it biting? Nope, this one's not biting. There it is. All right, so there we go. Very simple project. So let me run down the price. So 80 bucks for the PC, right? Then I found one eight gig stick at MC for $10. That puts me at 90. And then I went on eBay and I found 16 gigs, which is two gigs of sticks. Got those for, I think 30 bucks, I think it is. So what does that put me at? That puts me at like 120. Got this video card 
for about thirty dollars. So it's at one fifty, and then the solid state drive uh, five twelve, I think was thirty. So one eighty so far. So if I put in another twenty dollars for a PCIe card or another forty bucks, I'm looking at two twenty for a decent machine. Is this machine a daily driver for me? No, but I should be able to still do a lot of get a lot of stuff done with this machine all right so just reconnect let's close this flat back oh actually let me lift it back up connect this oh yeah i can i should be able to connect this my fingers are big if i close that flap it's gonna be hard for me to get my fingers in there and reconnect that pull on it a little bit just to make sure it's in place also this one Look at the grooves on this white thing. This white thing, white connector has grooves that match the motherboard to, to make sure you got it in. My fingers are big. There we go. Done. Close this flat back. And then, let me see. And then be careful with these little clips to, for the wire, to hold the wire in place. And that's it. Done. Done. Very easy project to do. You're done. Put the door back in, boot it up. You should be good to go. Anyway, I'm going to close this video out. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to upgrade this ProDesk 600 G1. Very easy to do it. Highly recommend buying it if you can get it at $80 like I did. Anyway, man, this is Charlie Eugene. Please click that like button. Hit that subscribe. Leave comments below. If you got questions, feel free to ask them. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah. If I can do it, you can do it too. Peace.